Hello everyone, this is Kenneth Brony from Cambro Tech. So in this second part of the video, you are going to see how we are going to bring in the map and put out this data we have imported from the CSV file onto the map. So what I'm going to do is, um, first of all, we don't need this. I just wanted to show you this, the first video for the query set and we would also not need this necessarily. So I'll just clear these ones off and also yeah we also don't need this for now so when i come back to application and come and refresh obviously we don't have any data displaying over here now what we are going to do is we are going to import folium and this is what is going to help us get our map okay so the folium is a python package which we can use to render maps and things of that sort now i have other videos i've published the first thing to do obviously is also to install folium so what we need to do is we are going to do a pip install folium I and mean, i'm doing this for maybe first time as i covered this in the other videos so as you can see over here to have requirements already satisfied i've actually imported folium then what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a map object so this variable m you see over here is going to be a map object and i'm going to say folium dot map so for folium dot map um i'll quickly run through some few things over here so this is going to create a map object but i want a location or a starting location and i'm just going to choose longitude of 12 and latitude of 12 and i'll say a zoom start of two all right so this is going to create a map and I'm going to override this map so i'm going to call m once again and i'll do this m dot and i'll do an underscore and i have or what i want actually is an html representation of this map and not um the the, the map object itself all right so um, like i said i covered this in the other video so you can actually check them up i'll leave the link in the description below then what i can do is i can actually put this map in this context dictionary so i'll do m as the key and the value is m over here the order i need to come here inside this is to kind of put this map over here but before i do so i just want to have a row and i'll give this a margin top of four and i'll put this in a column so i'll do dot call now do md10 and I also want to offset offset this to md i think one yeah so that it is inside the middle then what i can do over here is to put out the map objects m over here so when i do this and come and refresh we have this html representation of the map what we actually need is the map itself so i'll pass in a filter and i'll do save over here so once I refresh this, we have this map displaying over here. So in the final presentation, I showed different type of maps and you're actually going to see that. I think um, in the other videos, I also showed um, the various type of maps. So we can actually add um, another parameter over here, which is tiles. And tiles will specify the different type of map that we want to have. So we can have the Cato DB and we call this dark matter so dark matter um cato db dark matter for the tiles and if i'm to refresh over here we clearly see that we have a different map over here so this is basically what we are going to dwell on as far as the tiles are concerned so i'll just clear this save this once again come back here and we can see that we are back to our normal map like this now what i'm going to do is i'm also going to run some imports over here so i'll say um this time around from folium i want to import first of all let me import plugins and i also want to import raster layers okay raster layers is also in the folium so i can just do a comma and bring this up over here so i'm actually going to work with the raster layers for now and see how things go so so let me create 
a new variable over here i'm going to call uh, map one so map one is going to be equal to raster layers dot tile layer okay and once i call this tile layer i can now have access to tiles okay so i can say tiles like this and i'm going to use the cattle db dark matter over here so dark underscore matter then all that i need to do is i need to do a dot add to and what do i want to add to i want to add it to the parent map over here so the parent map is this m that we see over here so i'll call in m and save now if i'm to refresh this i can clearly see that a new map is now showing over here but i want a situation where i can toggle between the two and all that we need to do is to add in a layer control so for the layer control we are going to do polyum dot layer control and we are just going to leave it blank over here but then we need to add it to the map and the map that we need to add it is the main map over here so if i do this and save and come back to come and refresh we clearly see this icon over here when i hover around it you can see that we have this layer control and we can toggle between the various or the different maps that we want so i'm going to proceed into bringing the other maps in here so, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this or this map a couple of times so i have this duplicated and let me also change the name of the map so that python isn't confused then the next one after the cattle db dark matter we are going to see the positron so we have the positron over here then the next one is going to be the next one is going to be steamen terrain then after steamen terrain we also have steamen tuna then the final one is going to be the steamen uh, watercolor all right so i'll save all these and remember we are still adding them to the map object over here so if i should come back here and come and refresh you can see that when i now hover around this we have so these are different maps and i don't think you may need all of these maps in a single application but then depending on what you are doing a particular kind of map may serve a good purpose than the other so i just wanted to show this so that um, you can have that knowledge and know that as far as folium is concerned you have different type of maps you can use all right so we are done with um the first part of this session the next part is actually going to see how we put out the data of the various locations on this map all right so that's actually going to lead us to another python package and this is going to be um uh, django pandas so and this is going to be django panda so we are going to run a pip install Django pandas like we have over here now i already have this installed so definitely if i run it it's going to tell me the requirement is already satisfied back into vs code we need Django pandas let me just clear this over here then after installing Django pandas we need to come up over here and run an import so i'm going to say from Django um i'll do it from Django um underscore pandas io i want to import and i want to import the read frame and we are going to see exactly what this is going to do for us so what i'm going to do over here is to actually come down here is to actually come down here and come and put out some database query okay so once again we have our qs is equal to data dot um objects dot all now i covered this in the first video so i highly recommend you check that one out you already have um, our data model imported over here all right so we have this now as far as working with this query set is concerned it is not going to give us the desired output that you want as far as data uh, manipulation is concerned that's why we have this django pandas installed and also working with it over here so as far as this is concerned we can actually define a data frame we are going to call df so df is going to be this read pandas we imported 
okay so you can call the read pandas or the read frame sorry you call the read frame over here then all that we need to do is as you can see it says we need to provide the query set okay so the query set is exactly what we have over here as qs then the next one is the field names so the name of the fields that we'll be working with so uh, let's call field names and field names is also going to be a list okay so the names of the field that you are going to work with is country we need the latitude then we also need the longitude then finally we need the population as well so when i save this and yeah so this is what we need as far as putting out the data frame is concerned now let's actually print out this data frame so that you see exactly what's happening over here so let's print out df and let me go back here so that we see exactly what's happening so i'll just open this up a little bit and i'll come back here and come and refresh so if i'm to come back here you can see that we have our data frame printed out over here so you have it's like the structure we have in our database and that's exactly it's being given us over here and this is where things become very interesting because with data frames we can actually manipulate our data well other than the query sets that we have so with this done all that we are going to do is we are going to use um ita rules to actually get our data in here and this is what i mean let me just comment these ones out so that i mean you don't need to print the data frame every time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put out a for loop over here so i'm, I'm going to say for and i'm going to say index then rows over here in the data frame that we have over here okay this data frame as you've seen over here so as far as for the index and rows in the data frames dots and we we'll call the iter rows over here and this iter rules is the one going to do the magic for me now the first thing i want is after running this or after going through this loop i'm going to do a folium dot marker so the folium dot marker then i'm going to specify the location so the location as we already know is going to be a longitude and latitude now the longitude and latitude i just don't want to grab it hard coding i want to go through this loop okay through the data frame and put out things over here so what i can do is i can do now do rows dot lock okay so that i can grab things within the data frame and what i want to lock over here or what i want to grab in here is the latitude first so i want to do latitude latitude okay so i'll bring these ones down so this is going to grab the latitude and the next one is going to be the longitude and it's actually going to be a repetition of um, what i did so i'll do rules dot lock and i also specify longitude over here all right good so this is just about it if i'm to do it this way yes it's going to work perfectly remember we have these ones over here let me bring them over here okay so we also need to add to the main map over here all right so this is just going to work out perfectly so if i'm to come back here and come and refresh we are supposed to get the longitude i mean the markers in here i don't know what is happening all right so when i save this and come back here i think um the server was delaying a little bit but then we have this over here so as you can see these are the locations of the various places from the map okay or from the database and we actually had this through the csv file okay so we can actually um let's cut this over here the layer control and actually bring this up over here i think that was what was giving us a little bit of a problem yeah 
So I think this is just about it. When I refresh this, we are still going to have this layer control over here. Then we can toggle between the various maps and the things we see over here. Good. Now, the last thing I would also want to look at remember, we imported this um, plugins over here. Now, this plugins, um, we can actually call this plugin to do something for us. So let's see what we can actually make it do. So you can see plugins dot full map. Okay, we want to have a full screen. Okay, full screen, and all that we need to do is we can do a dot add um, call the dot add to method, and we want to add it to the main map, which is M over here. So if I'm to come back here to come and refresh, you can see that we have this. Um, icon over here when i click on this you see the full screen and definitely when um i toggle around this layer control we can see the different maps or the different yeah the different maps and that's exactly what we wanted we can actually add um a click event over here so that you can see the population and that's going to be the pop-up and all that we need to do is to come back here and do a comma and do a pop-up so the pop-up is going to be and over here too you can do rules dot lock okay rules dot lock and all that we need to have here is the population so i'll save this and if i come back here to come and refresh when i click on this i see the population over here I mean as specified in the database and yeah this looks um kind of good and interesting so um this will actually depend on exactly what we want or what you want to achieve as far as um the folio package is concerned and exactly what you want to do the application domain is endless i'm building a series of applications and mixing it up with um, different packages and things of that sort so that you can have a better feel of how some of these things work now you find this tutorial very interesting there are a couple of ways you can help me grow my channel kindly subscribe to cambro tech and don't forget to hit on the notification button so that anytime i release a video you'll be duly notified at cambro tech we say learn programming you can do it bye bye